Michael White was raising his five-year-old daughter alone, but he never complained. Moreover, the man had virtually no help from anyone. It seemed as if the little girl understood how hard it was for her father and barely ever gave him any trouble. Even more so, the girl tried to help her dad with everything she could. She could, for example, dust the house or make the coffee for her father in the morning. Michael loved his daughter very much and tried to make sure that she was never in need of anything. Michael's wife died a year ago under mysterious circumstances, and this thought haunted the man. The fact was that Wendy went on vacation to Miami that fateful summer. For some reason, the woman decided to go for a swim during a storm and drowned. They never found her body, and all Michael got was some of her personal belongings that she left on the beach. The poor man couldn't forgive himself for letting his wife go on vacation by herself. Unfortunately, Michael couldn't join her because of his work. Can't you wait for another month, dear? Then we could all go together, you, me, and Molly, the man offered. But Wendy was adamant. She was dead set on going to Miami at the height of the holiday season. Michael didn't know what was so important to her, and he couldn't ask her anymore. Having received the horrible news, the inconsolable husband fell into a deep depression, which was extremely difficult to get out of. It was only the sense of responsibility and concern for his little daughter that didn't allow Michael to drown in the feelings of grief and despair. Not a day passed without him thinking of Wendy, who was the meaning of his life. Moreover, Michael was constantly pestered by little Molly, who kept asking her father the same question every single morning. Dad, when is mom coming home? Michael kept coming up with all kinds of excuses to explain her mother's absence to his daughter. The man didn't dare to tell her the truth, hoping to avoid giving her the horrible news for as long as possible. Trying to distract Molly from her sad thoughts, Michael often took her out to the park where she could feed the swans and watch the squirrels jumping around the trees. One day, Michael asked Molly if she wanted to have a picnic by the river. Seeing his daughter's eyes sparkle with excitement, the man realized that this idea hit the mark. It seemed like an ordinary picnic by the river. There were especially many people there that day, so in order to avoid the crowd, Michael set up camp away from everyone else. Together with Molly, they built a fire and started frying sausage skewers. All this time, Molly kept humming the words of one simple song. Michael's mother taught him this song, and then he taught it to his daughter. The song wasn't perfectly rhymed, but it only made it funnier and sweeter. It was about a little boy who went into the forest and saw all sorts of amazing creatures there. Molly loved that song very much, and not a day passed that she didn't sing it over and over again. And then, sitting by the fire with her father, the girl kept singing it quietly. Since the day was hot, Molly asked her father to let her swim in the river. Michael's initial instinct was to allow his daughter to go into the water, but then he decided that she was too young for it and forbade her to do so. Instead, the father insisted that Molly play ball or ride the bike that was in the trunk of his car. Molly nodded obediently and followed her father's advice. Half an hour later, she forgot all about her desire to swim. It kept getting hotter and hotter, so Michael moved the sun loungers into the shade of the trees. At some point, the warm sun and blissful atmosphere made the man relax so much that he didn't even realize when he dozed off. That was partly due to the fact that Michael worked very hard and weekends were the only time he could rest. The man thought that he closed his eyes for no longer than a couple of minutes. But when Michael woke up, Molly wasn't there. Having looked around, the man started calling out loudly for his daughter, after which he ran to the river. What Michael saw there made the man's heart sink. Molly's tiny sandals were lying on the shore, as well as the doll that she always took with her. No, this, this can't be happening. She couldn't have. I forbade her from even coming near the river, Michael kept repeating. Trying to convince himself that Molly couldn't have disobeyed him and gone into the river without his permission, the man kept pacing up and down the riverbank like a cornered animal. Michael looked in all the riverside bushes and even the small forest by the river, but Molly was nowhere to be found. Only then did he realize what had happened. Lord, no, did she really drown in the river like her mother? 
Michael thought with tears in his eyes. Having realized that he needed help, the man called the police and the rescuers. Divers spent several hours searching the bottom, but they never found Molly's body. The current is very strong here, sir. It could have carried the body several miles downstream. We've even had cases when the bodies washed up in the neighboring state, one of the searchers carefully noted. No, 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 my daughter is alive, Michael shouted with tears in his eyes. Of course, the police didn't believe a single word they said. Moreover, they even expressed doubts as to whether Michael handled his parental responsibilities well. Are you blaming me for what happened? I fell asleep for five minutes. Michael tried to justify himself, but it was virtually impossible to convince the police officers. The law enforcement agents had already drawn their conclusions, and they didn't bode well for the inconsolable father. After reading Michael his rights, the police handcuffed the man and put him in the patrol car. Surprisingly, the investigation of Michael White's case was conducted very quickly. Meanwhile, the man believed that he was being framed and that someone deliberately set him up. A bunch of false witnesses immediately came forward to testify in court, claiming that Michael couldn't handle his parental responsibilities and that he often left Molly alone. But that isn't true, Michael shouted, which only made the jury dislike him more. They believed that a crime was committed and that Michael was to blame for it. The man was distraught with grief and couldn't understand what was happening and why he was being treated so cruelly. The devastated father was sentenced to five years to be served in a state county jail. It's hard to even imagine what the poor man who'd lost his wife and only daughter had to go through. Michael tried to keep himself in prison and never joined any groups. The only thing the man wanted was to get out and find the people responsible for framing him. This thought didn't let Michael sleep or even get any peace of mind, ever. Unfortunately, Michael didn't manage to serve his term without any incidents. The fact was that literally from his first days in prison, the man was bullied by the prisoners from one of the most dangerous criminal gangs. By humiliating Michael, they were trying to get him to make the rash decision and attack them first. Having realized what was happening, the lonely widower stoically endured the humiliation and didn't fall for their trap. He understood that someone on the outside really wanted to get rid of him in such a barbaric way. If it weren't for the help of one of the influential prisoners, Michael probably wouldn't have lived to see the day of his release. It was Benjamin Somers who took him under his wing as he immediately saw that he was a good person. He was an elderly man in his 60s who spent most of his life in prison. You remind me of my dead son, Michael. Benjamin said, looking into Michael's eyes. They discussed books that they read in the prison library, played chess, and told each other stories from their lives. It was Benjamin who told Michael that someone very powerful paid a lot of money to get him killed in prison. Some might say that five years isn't a terribly long sentence, but for Michael, each day seemed like an eternity. Every day was exactly as the one before, filled with hopelessness, longing, and memories of his past life. Crossing out the days on the tiny calendar, Michael couldn't wait for the day when he would finally be a free man. Thanks to Benjamin's help, the hostile inmates left Michael alone. The day before Michael was released, Benjamin shoved a note with the phone number into his hand. Call this number and say that I sent you. They will help you and sort out your case. Benjamin explained catching Michael's surprised look. The air of freedom was intoxicating and dizzying. At some point, Michael even briefly forgot that he was a lonely widower who lost his daughter in an accident. Having returned to his hometown, the man tried to start his life anew. During this time, most people had forgotten about what had happened to Michael, and some even deleted him from their contact lists. Of course, there was no way he could go back to his old job. None of the employers wanted to hire an ex-convict. Sure, Michael tried to prove that he was convicted by mistake, but no one seemed to care. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't find a permanent job. It was then that the man remembered the note that Benjamin Somers gave him. 
When Michael called the number, he was immediately invited to a meeting at an inconspicuous cafe. The man who met Michael called himself Stefan, and without asking too many questions, offered his help to the ex-convict. I need a job, and one more thing, Michael began timidly. Stefan looked inquiringly at him and said, Don't be shy, you can say whatever you need to. I owe Benjamin my life and will do everything to repay my debt. Sighing sadly, Michael began his story. Starting from afar, he told Stefan about how he lost his wife and then his own daughter. All this time, the man listened silently and only occasionally asked for some clarifications. Well, I think I can help you. I'm sure that this case isn't as simple as it seems at first glance. As for the job, it's a done deal. You'll work at a construction site for now, and then we'll see. Stefan said goodbye and got up from the table. Michael's mood improved instantly. Now he felt like a man and a citizen of his own country again, and not just an ex-convict with no prospect and purpose in life. The job that Stefan got Michael was hard, but the man liked it. Everything was simple there. From morning to evening, the man carried heavy stones, mixed cement mortar, and helped builders with better qualifications than his own. By evening, Michael could barely stand on his feet, which helped him sleep soundly at night, instead of getting haunted by the thoughts of his past. Time passed, but there was no news from Stefan. At some point, the man decided that he must have simply considered his duty fulfilled and didn't even bother to investigate his case any further. Since the organization Michael worked for provided their services to anyone who needed them, he always ended up working at different construction sites. Once, a group of builders, including Michael, got a contract to carry out repairs in an orphanage. It was an old, dilapidated building that had long been in need of renovation. Since there was nowhere for the orphans to go during the renovations, they simply moved from one room to another, thereby freeing up rooms for repairs. Looking at the little orphans, Michael involuntarily thought about Molly, who died seven years ago. One day, while doing plaster work in one of the rooms, the man heard a strange song. It was sung by one of the girls walking down the hall. The words to the song sounded vaguely familiar to Michael, and when the man listened more attentively, he realized that it was the very song about a boy who got lost in a forest filled with amazing creatures. This is the song I taught Molly, Michael thought. He turned around and saw a girl who looked a lot like his Molly. But since the girl looked more than 10 years old, the man couldn't say for sure whether she was actually Molly or not. Having run up to the girl, the man touched her shoulder and carefully looked into her eyes. How do you know this song? Michael asked, trying to make his voice sound as soft as possible. The girl smiled in embarrassment and then replied softly, I'm not sure. I don't remember anything from my past. They found me at the train station six years ago, but I, I don't remember anything that happened to me before then. Sweat was dripping down Michael's forehead. Given her age and the timeline of her story, this girl could well be his missing daughter. But the man needed definitive evidence in order to confirm or refute his suspicion. To do so, Michael immediately went to the director of the orphanage. After listening to the man, the director got to thinking. It was evident from his face that he didn't like the information Michael provided. Are you sure she's your daughter? All the evidence you have boils down to some song, and the girl's name isn't even Molly, it's Sarah. And you, as far as I understand, got sent to prison for failing to take care of your own daughter. And now you want to get her back, the director said, putting an emphasis on the last word. Least of all, Michael expected to hear such an answer. Of course, he could be wrong, and the girl could be someone else. But only Molly could know this song, and no one else has even heard of it. Trying to convince the director of the orphanage that he was right, Michael was ready to fall to his knees, just so the director would allow him to see his daughter. Unfortunately, the director didn't just refuse to entertain Michael's theory, but also forbade him from ever approaching the girl. The man's eyes filled with tears as he realized that there was nothing he could do. Michael wanted to scream at the top of his lungs, to let the world know that he was right, but he didn't do it, of course. 
It was at that point that Stefan finally called Michael. He managed to find some very interesting information. As it turned out, the man did a great job, which gave incredible results. But when Michael heard what Stefan had to say, his lips started trembling treacherously and tears welled up in his eyes. Are you sure? Is this really what happened? The man exclaimed in astonishment. Stefan nodded his head and showed Michael a photograph of his wife Wendy in the arms of an unfamiliar, gray-haired man. Your wife is alive. She deliberately faked her own death in order to live with her influential and wealthy lover. It was this man who came up with this whole ruse of drowning in the ocean, Stefan explained. To say that Michael was surprised would be a huge understatement. But the next piece of news that Stefan shared was even more shocking. Your dollar Molly is also alive. She didn't drown in the river. What would happen to her? Michael exclaimed. Your wife and her lover took Molly while you were sleeping. They wanted the girl to live with them. It was them who paid for you to get killed in prison. But a year later, Wendy broke up with their partner. And so she left her daughter at the station in order to be able to start a new relationship. Stefan explained. Tears welled up in Michael's eyes. Only then did he realize that he had lost five years of his life serving time in prison for other people's sins. As it turned out, Molly was so badly shocked by what her mother did that she had a nervous breakdown and lost her memory. For this very reason, Molly didn't recognize Michael at the orphanage and couldn't tell her own name. You can take these documents to the police, just don't tell them where you got them from. You have to understand, what I do isn't always legal, Stefan said in parting. Following his advice, Michael set to work. About two weeks later, Wendy was arrested in a California hotel, where she was caught in the arms of yet another rich man. The accusations brought against the woman were enough to put her in prison for a long time. Michael didn't go to the court session because he didn't want to look into the eyes of the woman who betrayed him and took away his family and freedom. Instead, he got custody of Molly and took his daughter to a specialist who helped her get her memory back. Remembering her past bit by bit, Molly was able to return to her former life in just a month. Now that all the trials were over, Michael was on cloud nine. Having survived so many misfortunes, he emerged from them a winner, although many had previously considered him and an outright loser.